is Tuesday the 7th of June um, so I'm going to crack on with a few um, got a lot on over the next couple of days and I will be able to enlighten you as to what's been going on over the last few weeks um, at the uh, at the end of my little run so tonight um, in fact all three of them have been um, that I'm going to do tonight have been um, kind of donated by my good friend John Pitts the, uh, my ex assistant manager at the whiskey shop in York, who was uh, manager when I took over, well, when I took over, took over as manager when I left, and um, is now living in Pennsylvania, um, the jammy sod. Um, so the first one is Blanton's uh, single barrel. Uh, now the single barrel looks like this, and um, you'll notice quite a funky looking bottle with a uh, racehorse on the top of it. So. Um, Blanton's um, as a whiskey uh, was actually um, launched by uh, the master distiller Elmer T. Lee at the Buffalo Trace Distillery in Frankfurt, not Frankfurt uh, in Germany, but Frankfurt, Kentucky, which is here, um, in 1984. Um, and it was named after um, a guy called Colonel Albert B. Blanton, who was previously um, sort of like one of the leaders of the distillery. Um, it wasn't called Buffalo Trace back then. Uh, Buffalo Trace is quite recently uh, named that after um, the Sazerac company took it over. Um, but um, Albert B. Blanton ran the distillery. He joined when he was 16 um, in 1897 um, and eventually kind of worked his way through the company and became president of, of the distillery itself in 1921. Um, he died in 1959, but he actually um, hired Elmer T. Lee himself uh, in 1949. So um, Elmer wanted to launch Blanton's as a, a Blanton's as a um, kind of one of the first expressions of a single barrel bourbon from Kentucky, um, and obviously with the guy that hired him and such an important person in, in the distillery itself, it seemed like the right name to use. Um, now I'm not sure exactly what the um, association is with the horses themselves, but um, the uh, various bottlings and releases of Blanton's that you can get um, have different uh, stoppers on the top. Um, now they actually have moulded into them um, a letter, one letter in each of them. Now I've had a bottle of Blanton's and it's it's empty in my garage on my shelf um, and I've never actually noticed the letter on it so I'm going to have to check that out. Um, but it essentially spells B-L-A-N-T-O-N-S, -B Blanton's. Um, and there's eight, so there's eight letters, um, and there's eight different horses, um, and they all represent different stages of a horse race. So one is kind of, um, it, it's literally kind of like if you look at, if you lined eight of them up, it would actually be various stages of a horse running from start to finish of a horse race. Never knew that before. Never knew that until I did the research on it. I just thought it was like a cool looking horse on the top of it. Horse racing does have quite a bit of. Um, uh, What's the word not influence but there, there, there is quite a lot of um, kind of influence of horse racing and the Kentucky and horse racing is kind of quite close, closely associated association that was the word I was looking for um, so anyway this is the single barrel now there is actually several different expressions of Blanton's around the world and they actually have different um, stoppers and different colored labels so once I've pulled this I will tell you what they are. Now this is the single barrel which is 45.2%. So this is a, essentially it's single barrels of bourbon that are released in very, very small batches from each barrel. So I don't know what batch this is from. Um, this is matured in the only metal, um, uh, metal in case warehouse at the Buffalo Trace Distilleries, which actually makes the warehouse more humid, more hotter because the, the metal is retaining the heat inside of it. So there's an argument that it ages more rapidly because of the additional heat within the warehouse. Um, it, but there is people out there, you know, if you go to some of these bourbon forums where they're like, um, right, I've got this batch of blondes and somebody else will turn around and go, oh yeah, but it's not as good as this batch that I've got because the handwritten labels that I've got, it's this bottle from this batch from this rack and blah, blah, blah. I'm not going to go that deep into it. I'm going to take this as the representation of a standard Blanton's. But there's going to be some people out there that go, oh, no, 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 you can't do that. You'd have to try like 27,000 different versions of Blanton's. Anyway, here is the Wikipedia page which tells you what the other releases of Blanton's are. So Blanton's in the US is most commonly bottled with a beige label at 93 proof. Blanton's in Japan is most commonly bottled at 80 proof with a black label. Blanton's Special Reserve is bottled at 80 proof with a green label. Blanton's Gold is bottled at 103 proof with 
funnily enough, a gold coloured label and stopper. Blunt and Silver is bottled at 98 proof and, well, yes, there's a silver coloured label and stopper. And then Blanton's Barrel Proof is bottled at variable proofs with a copper coloured label. So, this is the standard uh, single barrel. Uh, this is like the standard one, so it's 45.2% uh, and not 45.2%, 46.5%. I was looking at another bottle on the side there. So, and it's quite hot this one now I like I say I've had a bottle of lanterns and I'm sure it was just the standard single barrel so it's this, essentially the same as what job but I don't remember it being quite as hot as this one is on the nose but it is quite fiery almost but sweet barbecue smoke on it but not quite as fiery on the palate not as hot as you would expect a really nice wrist smoothness to it. Slightly caramelised demerara sugar. A little bit of dry spice in there as well. Sort of a touch of cinnamon. But there's a almost a really, really soft paprika. Mmm. Yeah, there is a spiciness to it, but it's kind of like a, a really mild chilli spice. Very, very, very mild. Don't get me wrong, this isn't like a, you know, a vindaloo or anything like that. It's just a really, really mild paprika, um, it's like smoked paprika flavor, uh, flavor to it. Mm. Just at the background, but it really sets off the sweetness of that caramelized, dark brown, muscovado, demerara sugar, that sort of feel to it. A little bit of heat. It kind of what I would expect from a 46%. But it's smooth. It, it doesn't. It's quite tight on the nose, but it's not there on the palate. Mm. Blanton's is really, really highly regarded. I found in like bourbon groups and bourbon forums I'm on, and this is this is just the right side of the heat for me. I don't really. I'm not a big fan of bourbons that have got heat and spiciness to it. I prefer them much richer and smoother. And this has got just the right balance for me in terms of a little bit of heat just to make it spicy, but still soft and smooth and rich. It's For a long time, it's been one of my all-time favorite bourbons. I think more probably because of the packaging, but having come back to it, it's still a great bourbon. It's It's got everything that you would look for in a bourbon. It's what, kind of a classic bourbon. Nothing distinctive about it. It's just really, really well made. It's great stuff. Yeah, I'm glad it's still really good. And let's face it, the bottle looks amazing. It's a beautiful bit of packaging as well. One of the first bourbons I ever bought, actually, and it was kind of what got me into bourbon, was more the bottle inspired me to pick it up and buy it and then drink it and enjoy it and go, right, I'm going to start drinking bourbons. Great stuff, really, really good. Um, what I was selling it, Whiskey Exchange was selling this at £45 a bottle. Um, Master and Malt was selling this at 52. It's one of those where it kind of, I think it depends on the batches and things like that, but you're looking at about 45 to 50 quid. In all honesty, for a bourbon in the UK, that's a half decent price because bourbon does tend to ramp up the price because of the, the importing costs that have got to be um, kind of taken into consideration. And it's a premium bourbon as well. You know, it's kind of edging into that super premium as well. So I think that's a pretty fair price. You're getting something really good. It looks fantastic on the shelf, even when it's empty. And it's a cracking, really, really, really well-made bourbon. Fantastic stuff. Right, quick rinse out, and I shall get the next one. Cheers.